Hi everybody, this is So So Blessed and I'm broadcasting from work in my car and I just had a thought that I wanted to share and I'm not sure if I'm going to use this video or make another one when I get home but I was watching Oprah the other night and I was watching my DVR so the episode was a little old, I don't know how old but um, Natalie Holloway's mom was on Oprah talking about her daughter's disappearance Remember Natalie Holloway was the young lady who went to Aruba on a school field trip and never returned. And she's missing. Don't know if she's dead or just missing, but um, nonetheless, it's a tragedy. And as I heard this story, I don't know how long ago the story actually broke. I don't know if it's been a year or maybe or two, maybe. Um, but I remember my thoughts about this incident was, you know, God, how careless can you be? You know, and, and really to put it more honestly, um, how stupid can you be is what my really, what my thoughts were um, when I heard the details about um, what led to her being missing and it said that she was, you know, had been drinking and partying and she left in a car with these three guys. And I remember all that time up until me watching her mother on television, on Oprah the other night, me thinking, you know, how careless are these young girls? How stupid, you know, um, can they be? How, you know, how immature is that? And um, irresponsible, you know, to get into the car with people that you don't know. And especially in an inebriated state. But as I watched uh, her mom talk about the whole ordeal, it hit me in my spirit like a ton of bricks. That it just came back to remind me of how close I came to being a Natalie Holloway. Um, when I was young and promiscu promiscuous and way back in the day, um, I, I'm just going to give you, I'm just going to, I'm a very private person, and this is just beyond my comfort zone to even share with you, but if it could help anybody, if it help anybody out there, if it could save one young lady from becoming missing, and if it could save a heartache, you know, from any parent going through what parents of missing uh, people, missing children go through, if I can help one then I'll just have to bite the bullet and uh, share my testimony. But I can remember way back in the day, being in college, uh, one instance was I'm walking along, you know, the roadway, going to the store, coming back from the store, and this young man pulls over and talks to me, and he's hollering at me, and, um, and he asks me what I'm doing later on that night. And, oh, nothing, I'm not doing anything, so says, can I come back and pick you up tonight? And, you know, you can come over to my place. So, young, silly, immature me. I sure. Later that night, he comes back to pick me up. Now, mind you, by this point, I only, knows, I only know his name. Or what he tells me his name is. And I go to his, um, I leave my dorm. And I go to his place. Which was... Maybe a 30 minute drive. I get there. It does, you know, we have a conversation. Everything seems safe. But it doesn't dawn on me the danger or the potential danger I'm putting myself in until we get to his place and he, he has two other roommates. So here it is three guys that I've never, well, two that I've never laid eyes on. One I only met briefly in a five minute conversation a few hours before. Now, I am terrified. They don't, they're not doing anything. They're really friendly. But now, I'm inwardly, you know, and I'm trying not to show it, and I'm trying to be cool and mature and worldly. And I'm trying not to show that I am now terrified because now I'm thinking of the potential danger that I've put myself in. But they were okay. They were cool. And then, they were like, oh, ah, you know, do you have a friend who looks like you? You know, I looked a lot different back then.
um, oh, ah, do we have a friend who looked like you? So, I said, yeah, I got a friend, and I was all too happy to say, yeah, I have a friend. Can we go back and pick her up? So, we go back to my dorm, 30-minute ride, pick her up. Well, I call her up, and she's, yeah, she's gang. She's as silly and immature as I am. So, we go pick her up. We come back. We have a good time. Although everything turned out okay, um, didn't lose much, but probably a little dignity. But that just reminded me how, how that's the same thing Natalie Holloway did. She got into a car with three guys she didn't know after drinking and partying. And that's because I think we innately trust people, especially when you're that young. When you're 16, 17, 18 years old, you innately trust people. You think everybody's good because you're good. You think nobody will harm another person because you wouldn't dare harm another person. So you think, of course, everybody has to be like that. Well, everybody's not like that. I remember another incident. When I was about 10th grade, high school, went on a cruise. Met one of the staff members, um, handsome, good-looking, older guy, staff member. He asked me down to come down to his cabin. Um, after maybe a day on the, or so on the cruise, I go down to his cabin. We talk, we hit it off. Um, I didn't give. I managed to escape without giving up my goodies, just barely, mind you. But he gets upset because I won't give up my goodies. So. I was like, let me get out of here because this man is truly getting upset because I'm not giving up the goodies. I escaped that and everything was all good. But it's not until years later, years and years later that I think about, I could have gone down in that cabin. You know, the staff cabin on a cruise is way down at the bottom of the boat. No one, I didn't tell anybody. Of course, it's too embarrassing to tell somebody you're going to go meet with somebody that you just met earlier today. So... I could have been, I could have been murdered down at the, at the bottom of the cabin and nobody would know. And then, um, another incident, I don't know, there are so many, there are so many incidents that I could name, but I just think about how many times it could have been my mom on Oprah, you know, um, the danger that I put myself in all because somebody thought I was hot somebody thought I was attractive all because it made me feel good to get a little attention um, it's just not worth it so if this video can help any young lady to realize that you don't go anywhere with anybody you don't know and I mean know them really well I mean really know them because Another incident was, there was this guy that I was seeing. We were friends, but, you know, friends with benefits. And he would come pick me up. When, this is when I was in college. He'd come pick me up. I'd go over to his place. And after maybe, I don't know, six months of thinking that I know this guy, thinking that we had somewhat of a relationship, I knew we weren't boyfriend and girlfriend, but, you know, we were friends with benefits. Well, we, this night, okay, I did give up my goodies. Uh... But in the middle of the night or early morning, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, um, I feel someone touching me. I'm assuming it is him. I roll over. It's his friend. I mean, uh, that, that taught me a lot about who you think your friends are. I, I mean, I jumped up and I mean, I told them both off and especially the guy that I thought was my friend. Uh, mind you, I've never, I never saw him again because, um, I mean, back then my philosophy was I might give up the goodies, but I'm giving up the goodies to who I want to give the goodies up to. Oh, anyways, so I thought I knew that person. I thought he was my friend. Turned out he wasn't. So even when you think you know someone, when you think you have a friend, they might not always be friends. So, young ladies, if this helps one young lady... Young ladies, be careful who you leave the club with. Be careful who you go out on a date with. Be careful um, who you spend your time with. Because you don't want to be the next Natalie Holloway. I could have been Natalie Holloway. But by God's mercy, I'm still here. Y'all be blessed.